Hello, and welcome to part 18 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I want to talk about two very essential tools to use when you're finessing a model that you are almost complete, and those are Edge Slide and Vertex Slide. To demonstrate what those two tools are, what they look like, and how you can use them, I'm going to be using the bunny head that I created in part 6 of this video series, I believe it was. And if you look at this model, I have two modifiers on it. I have the mirror modifier, which allows me to model only one half of the character's head, and I have the subdivision surface or subsurf modifier, which makes my mesh really smooth. Those two things are important because it allows me to model the head very quickly and make the mesh look good. But the subsurf modifier does play some tricks on us when we're modeling. It does dictate how we will space, um, especially edges, out. To demonstrate what edge slide looks like, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and I'll turn off my um, limit selection divisible button to make it so I can't see the background faces and I'll go to my front view. The first thing that I want to say before I get to edge slide and vertex slide is that it's important to use the geometry that you have as you're modeling to its best extent. The best way I can describe that is when I modeled the character's nose originally, it was just a square that I extruded out and scaled and extruded and, and scaled. But when I wanted to make it round, I make it made a cut through both the um, the nose horizontally and vertically, and that let me pull out the edges on the side of those, especially that one, to make the nose round on the side, and the same thing on the top and bottom. But then I made because of that, I made this loop of edges around the side of the character's head. And if I look at it from the front, I'm not using that edge on this side. In fact, it's hindering the head from becoming round right there. Basically from there to there, the side of the head is flat. That's not really a good thing. So what I'd probably do in this case is grab the edges that I have right here on the side of the character's head, go back to my front view, and pull them out so they're round. The problem that causes though is the shape of the character's head is pretty good, but the topology is now a little bit warped this vertice right here is not following or flowing in a nice line. So this is a case where I'd want to slide this vertex over. To slide a vertex, it's a very simple process. No matter which sort of selection mode that you're in, vertice, edge, or face, there is a menu for that. So if I press uh, Control V for the vertex menu, that's what it brings up, the vertices menu. Again, that's Control V. It gives me things that I can do with vertices. If I'm in the edge select menu, I can press Control E for that menu. It brings up things that I can do with edges. And the same thing, Control F with the faces menu. In this case, I want to select this vertice and slide it along that way to put it back in line. The difference between doing that and just moving it is that when you move it, it will distort the shape of the head slightly because it's not moving it sort of forward and over. It's just moving it over. And of course I could do that, but sliding keeps everything uh, with the same shape always, or at least approximately. To slide, you bring up the vertex menu, at least to do a, a vertex slide, and you select the slide option. And there is a keyboard shortcut, which is Shift V. So I'll use that, Shift V, and that will let me slide it over. Now the slide vertex or vertex slide tool is pretty new to Blender. I believe it came in 2.63 or so. Um, and that's why his interface is a little bit funny. Let's you pick one of the directions of the edges that come off of that vertex. In this case, there are four options or four directions I can go, but I'm gonna move it back about in that direction and that's the way I'm gonna leave it. For vertex slide, there's also another case where if I hide my uh, subdivision surface modifier and I zoom in on the middle of the eye, I have these um, edge loop circles that are going in towards the bunny's eye socket, but the spacing of the circles, if you'll call them that, um, like this inner circle, it's become very distorted. So what I wanna do is, and we'll talk about edge sliding in a minute, I couldn't just slide all these edges over to make these two sections even. You see how this one's very short and this one's very well, much longer. I can't just slide that whole edge over, I need to slide them differently because these ones up here are okay. So if I, and this is how you edge slide, control E and edge slide, that would not work because now these two are in the middle and these two are large. I could do it step by step, but again, vertice slide or vertex slide is the best option. Control V slide or just shift V. Now I can move this one down and this one down and this one down a little bit. 
So that's vertex slide. Edge slide is equally important and it lets you make big sweeping changes. What often I see in meshes, especially character or organic meshes, is uneven spacing. And uneven spacing can allow um, the mesh to kind of pucker and not be even in its flow, especially when you have subsurf or the subsurf modifier applied. If two edges are close together, so I'm going to press Control E and edge slide. There is no keyboard shortcut for this by default, unfortunately. But put two edges close together and I leave it, you're going to kind of see an edge there, especially when lighting casts a shadow. So if you find that on your mesh you have uneven spacing, the best thing to do is select an edge loop or an edge ring in some cases and slide them along. How do you select an edge loop? Well, if you hold Alt on your keyboard, and this can be done in edge mode or vertice select mode, and you right click on an edge with the Alt key pressed down, it'll select all the edges in a loop that are connected. Now keep in mind that edge loops only work when you have, when each vertice in that loop has four edges coming off of it in an intersection. In other words, each one of the vertices along this edge loop has four edges coming off of it, but it breaks right here because there's an extra edge, there's five. If there's three or five or anything but four, an edge loop will be broken. So in this case, I might move this one over a little bit, control E, edge slide, but more importantly, it's this one that needs to get moved over, control E, edge slide. So that's edge sliding and vertex sliding. The last thing I'll say is that, again, because of the subsurf modifier, you might want to slide on edges depending on how hard of edges that you want on your mesh. In this case, when I shoot the bunny ear, I left, and I'm going to turn off the subsurf modifier so you can see this, I have edges that are close together. In other words, these two edges are close together, as are these two. And that creates a harder edge, or a less smooth area. The closer together, and I'm going to slide these two edges very close together. If I go back into object mode and show the model with the subsurf modifier applied, there becomes a crease there. If I slide these edges around, edge slide with control E, I can get rid of that edge by spacing those edges farther apart. So that's another good use of edge slide. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.